One of the standard personal weapons of the army today is the 7.62 mm L1A1 rifle. It is a self-loading air-cooled weapon for delivering single shot fire at a potential rate of 20 aimed shots a minute. Initial cocking is achieved by pulling back the cocking handle and releasing it to fly forward again, thus loading the top round from the magazine into the chamber. Applying the holding open catch, removing the empty 20 round box type magazine and replacing it with a full one. The holding open catch released by pulling back on the cocking handle. To control the amount of gas necessary to operate the mechanism, the gas regulator can be set as required. The change lever must be moved from safe to repetition before the trigger can be pressed. The weapon does, of course, conform to the principles of automatic weapons. This being so, the normal cycle of operations must apply, so that we find it functioning to fire, unlock, extract and eject, feed, cock, load and lock. First, let us briefly consider the action under these headings. First, fire. When the trigger is pressed, the hammer strikes the base of the firing pin. Next, unlock. Some of the gases which force the bullet along the bore are diverted through this vent and strike the piston head. The other end of the piston pushes the breech block carrier rearwards, which by internal cams lifts the breech block, unlocking it. Then extract. At the same time, this movement draws the breech block backwards, thus extracting the spent case. Continuation of backward movement causes ejection. The spent case is drawn sharply back against the ejector and is thrown clear of the weapon. Then feed. By now, the breech block has passed back beyond the magazine. The magazine spring pushes a fresh round into the path of the breech block, thus feed. Part of the cocking action occurs on backward movement. As the breech block carrier continues rearwards, it starts to reset the trigger mechanism. The second stage of cocking occurs after locking is completed in the forward movement, when the safety sear is tripped by the release bent of the breech block. Loading takes place on forward movement. The face of the breech block strikes the fed round and pushes it into the chamber. Now, locking. A system of cams forces the breech block down into engagement with the locking shoulder. The trigger is released and the gun is ready to fire another round. So much for the principles. Now to investigate them in greater detail. First, firing. The action is fully cocked and set to fire. When the trigger is pressed, it will rotate about its axis. The tail will rise and the trigger spring will be compressed. The tail of the sear will be forced upwards. The nose will be disengaged from the lower bent of the hammer. The sear spring will force the sear forwards along its elongated axis to bring its tail down and in front of the step in the trigger. At the same time, the nose will rise to friction on the hub of the hammer as the hammer, driven by the hammer spring assembly, flies forward to strike the firing pin head. This is the breech block. It contains the spring-loaded firing pin. On the diagram, the mechanism has been returned to the cocked position. Inside the breech block carrier is the breech block. 
Inside the breech block is the firing pin and spring. When the firing pin head is struck, the pin will be pushed forward and the spring compressed. The point of the firing pin protrudes through the block and strikes the cap of the chambered round. Next, unlocking, which is motivated by gas pressure. On firing, gas pressure drives the bullet along the bore of the barrel. During this time, gas pressure will of course be high and directed through this port, will strike the piston and drive it to the rear, compressing the piston spring. Any gas in excess of this requirement will exhaust through this vent. The tail of the piston will strike the breech block carrier and drive it to the rear. Continuation of this movement will disengage the breech block vent from the locking shoulder in the body. Here is the breech block carrier. It has been cut so we can look inside. Here are the unlocking cams and vertical thrust face on one side of the carrier and on the breech block. Another set on the other side of the breech block and of course on the carrier. Back to the diagram where the breech block and carrier are shown in the forward position immediately after firing. Removing part of the carrier reveals its near side unlocking cam and thrust face. It also shows the corresponding cam and thrust face on the breech block. During the first three tenths of an inch of backward movement of the breech block carrier, the breech block remains stationary. This is a mechanical safety feature which ensures that the action remains locked and the breech sealed until the bullet has left the barrel and gas pressure has subsided. Now the unlocking cams are in contact, further movement will lift the tail of the breech block disengaging its bent from the locking shoulder. The ramps on the carrier will ride further along and thus support the breech block. Then the vertical thrust faces of the carrier will contact those of the breech block and drive it rearwards. Let us look at the action once more. The mechanism is now unlocked. Now extraction. Here is the extractor on the face of the breech block. It is spring loaded. Here is extraction viewed from on top. This is the breech block carrier and this is the breech block. This is the extractor. When the carrier takes the breech block to the rear, the extractor will withdraw the spent case from the chamber and will hold it on the face of the block. Next, eject. In the body is this fixed projection called the ejector. Here it is on the diagram. As the breech block is carried to the rear, the base of the spent case will be drawn back sharply against the ejector. Pivoting about the extractor, it will be thrown out to the right. The piston has been returned by its spring to the forward position. As the carrier continues backwards, the rod pivoted at the carrier's rear end compresses the return spring in the butt. Feed. In the magazine is a powerful spring which presses the rounds in the magazine against the underside of the breech block. 
When the block moves back far enough, the top round is pushed up ready for eventual loading. Feed has taken place. After feed, the next function to be considered is cock. Cocking is the action of setting the firing mechanism so that it will fire when the trigger is pressed. Remember, in this weapon, it is done in two stages. Let us go back to the point immediately after firing, when the breech block carrier begins moving to the rear. This movement will pivot the hammer backwards, thus compressing its spring and allowing the firing pin to retract. Pressure of the carrier release vent against the safety sear will be removed, permitting the tail of the safety sear to friction on the hub of the hammer. The hammer continues to rotate. Its lower bent will override the nose of the sear. Finally, its upper bent will engage the nose of the safety sear to complete the first stage of cocking. Watch the action of the mechanism as it happens. The firing pin retracts and is then shrouded by the breech block carrier. The hammer spring is compressed the arm of the safety sear rises to its full height. After cocking and on the forward movement, load. Loading is brought about by the breech block striking the base of the top round in the magazine and pushing it forward into the chamber. When the compressed return spring in the butt reasserts itself, it drives the breech block carrier forward until the upper rear cams of the carrier meet those of the breech block. Thereafter, block and carrier will move forward together. The lower front face of the breech block strikes the base of the fed cartridge and pushes it forward via the cartridge guides into the chamber. If we go back and view loading from the top, we will see that as the forward movement of the breech block is arrested and the cartridge is fully chambered, the extractor will ride over and engage the groove in the base of the cartridge. Although forward movement of the breech block has been arrested, the breech block carrier still has a short distance to travel. After load, lock. You will recall the upper rear cams of the breech block and the corresponding cams of the breech block carrier. If we remove part of the breech block carrier, we can see what happens inside to bring about the locking action. See how it works. When the breech block halts, the carrier cams will force the breech block down so that its bent will engage the locking shoulder in the body. Note that in this position, the firing pin is shrouded by the carrier, which still has a short distance to travel. The cams will now override to hold the breech block in positive engagement with the locking shoulder. The final three-tenths of an inch of forward movement causes the firing pin head to protrude through this hole in the back of the carrier. The forward movement is completed when the beating face of the carrier contacts the body. The action is now locked and the breech is sealed. During the last part of the carrier's forward movement, this release bent will trip the safety sear and disengage its tail from the hammer. The hammer will pivot forward until its lower bent contacts the sear nose. This will force the sear along its elongated axis until its tail comes hard against this step on the trigger. The trigger must be released, then pressed again in order to fire another shot. Here is what happens when pressure on the trigger is released. The trigger spring and plunger will pivot the trigger forward and its tail will be lowered. This will free the tail of the sear from contact with the step on the trigger. Under the influence of its spring, the hammer will pivot forward and will force the sear rearwards to the limit of its elongated axis. This will position the tail of the sear above the step on the trigger 
in readiness to fire the next shot. The second stage of cocking has now occurred and the rifle will fire again when the trigger is pressed. In addition to the inbuilt or mechanical safety features, there is an applied safety device. With the change lever in this position, the rifle will fire single shots. When it is here, the trigger cannot be pulled. This is why. The lever is attached to a spindle with one flat surface. When set at R, repetition, the flat is presented to the tail of the trigger and so allows the trigger to move. But at S, safe, the curved surface blocks the movement of the trigger. Now, let us run through the action briefly and recapitulate on the eight functions and how they are carried out in this weapon. First, it fires when the trigger is pressed and the hammer strikes the firing pin. Second, some of the gas driving the bullet along the bore actuates the piston, which in turn drives the carrier backwards. After the first three-tenths of an inch of movement, the breech block bent is lifted clear of the locking shoulder in the body and carried back. This movement extracts the spent cartridge case which eventually strikes the ejector and is thrown clear of the gun. During backward movement, feed occurs when the magazine spring forces the next round up into the path of the breech block. Remember,